Hello, North Central Washington, and welcome to episode two of season 11 of Network TV, the show that shines a spotlight on the cutting edge of technology, education, and entrepreneurship, right here from the heart of our vibrant region. I'm your host, David Maybe, Marketing Manager, Marketing Director at NCW Tech Alliance, and in this episode, we're zeroing in on our entrepreneurship pillar, bringing you an engaging discussion that's all about turning innovative ideas into successful ventures. Today, we're thrilled to have Carly Soroki and Kirk Duncan with us, two remarkable entrepreneurs who not only share a background in the dynamic ski industry, but also exemplify the spirit of innovation and the drive to make a meaningful impact through their work. Join us as they unfold their unique journeys, offering valuable insights and inspiration for anyone looking to navigate the exciting world of entrepreneurship. Welcome back to Network TV. I'm excited to introduce you to Kirk Duncan and Carly Soroki. How are you guys doing today? Life is good. Life is good. All right, Kirk and Carly, um, I guess give me a little bit of intro about uh, your backgrounds and, and what you're currently doing. Uh, we'll start with you, Kirk. And so I, I graduated from the University of Washington. I worked my way through in food service and I ended up buying the food service at Mount Baker Ski Area and operated that for 10 years, then got into ski area consulting and just been traveling around working with half the ski areas in the country, ended up in Juneau, Alaska. Uh, running a ski area up there and then the Public Works Department Parks and Rec retired two and a half years ago and now I'm back uh, working for the Small Business Development Center helping uh, small businesses improve their profitability as well as helping new people new businesses get started all right so we're gonna dive into this but Carly let's get a little introduction on you as well so we can kind of tie all this together for the audience at home there sounds good well I'm basically just a different version of Kirk uh, so also love skiing in Alaska and I'm a local girl went to Eastmont High School and oh, okay. then I went to college on the west side started my career in marketing and built up my business Karma Designs so we're a marketing agency and then I'm also a patroller at Mission Ridge and did some time in Alaska as a guide up there so so we all have the common thread of uh, ski industry here so uh, I guess I'm interested to know what, what Kirk first, what drew you to the ski industry and kind of how did you get that going there? It was interesting because I wasn't drawn by skiing. I was drawn by one, I love food service and hospitality and two, that the unique opportunity of a seasonal business, it starts and it stops. And, and I just really, really liked that. Right. And then, then I went on and, and um, People saw food service as a necessary evil, so a lot of ski areas hired me to make their problems go away. And so when you say food services, did you take over like kitchens at the restaurant then, or I mean at, at the resorts, or is this bringing in like a, a taco truck or like some what, sort of side? What I would do is I would work with their existing staff and, oh. and improve the operation. So I, I didn't actually uh, work in the operation, I just told people what to do. It gotcha. was a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good one. And Carly, what, what drove you to the ski industry and kind of what, what have you done in the ski industry? Well, I was drawn by skiing and I grew up skiing and road mission as a young girl and kind of got to the point where I was getting bored. And so I thought, hmm, how can I make this more difficult? A theme of entrepreneurialism <laughs> in life. And so I started patrolling down in Ashland, Oregon. And now, like I said, I volunteer with the Mission Ridge Ski Patrol. Shout out to the crew. Um, and they're great and it's like starting over. It's like learning to walk again. <laughs> yeah, and I know I know especially with Ski Patrol, those are a tight-knit group of people, especially at Mission Ridge. I know that a lot of those people have been around for a really long time. Uh, Delcy, shout out to Delcy Provident, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or now Bird, uh, amazing human being. Uh, so what's that dynamic like working um, with the Ski Patrollers versus like working with somebody you're doing business with? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I mean, maybe I like it because I get to be told what to do. <laughs> right. Whereas I tell people what to do in my day job. And so on my volunteer days, I get to turn all that off and just be outside and be analog. And they say jump and I say how high. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, Carly, what inspired you to start Karma Design and the 509 Female Founders? Yeah, so Karma Design, my branding and web agency, started because I've always been fascinated with the psychology of people and how we work and how we make decisions and somehow I wanted to see if I could manipulate that for good, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. And so I wove in all of the marketing and 
people, you know, stuff that I like. And along the way, I worked with so many small businesses, medium-sized businesses that I got to know the owners and they would kind of come to me for more than just advice on my logo, my brochure, my website. They wanted to know about operations and finance and things that I didn't know about. So I went off and got some education through Goldman Sachs and then started this mastermind to teach local women business owners hard skills. And so that the 509 Female Founders, that's the separate, is that a path or is it a, as an actual company that you started to, to do this or how does that all tie in? It is for all intents and purposes a DBA under Karma, but it is a nine month mastermind where a small group of women, last year it was around six or seven, are together for nine months and each month there's a different focus area such as marketing, sales, and then everything in that month aligns with that subject. And so they're learning together through hosts, venue hosts in this area, guest speakers, audiobooks, etc. And then Kirk, can does that tie into the small business uh, development that you're doing as well? Do, has there been a tie-in with uh, women doing the 509 Female Founders and the small business development that you're Absolutely, of? yeah. We've had uh, several have come over from, uh, from Carly's uh, organization. And so we just help them maybe get a little bit more in the weeds in terms of developing business plans. And um, if people want financing, they're going to have to create a business plan for banks. And so we, we actually provide that expertise and sit down with them and handhold them and walk them right through the process. Okay. So if it, Carly, is your part to get them the inspiration and kind of the guidance on how to get going? And then Kirk comes in and helps them with business plans and financing and things like that. Is I think it? that's an accurate description. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, so when is the next uh, female founders that's going to happen? Good question. Yeah, I just made the decision to postpone it this year. It was kind of a heartbreaking decision, but it was really difficult to run. It takes a ton of work. And so I'm debating whether it'll be maybe an every two years sort of thing, like a conference, just to build up the, the critical mass to do it again. But just stay tuned. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, so we'll, we'll stay tuned and, and we'll have uh, links to your website and things like that. So what is the, I guess, what's the overall goal then um, to get these female founders? Do you just get them rolling and going and it's kind of like push them off and then Kirk comes through and, and, and you know, you're doing their small business development and they're getting financing and things like that? or kind of what's, what's the life cycle that, that you have with them? And then what's the life cycle that, Kirk, you would have with a small business? Yeah, so our program is nine months long and it's not an accident, the term of gestation of a human being, and it's designed to start a growth opportunity from beginning to end. So if you have a new sector you wanna break into, a new product you wanna launch, or if you're starting a business from scratch, it starts with market research, it moves into branding, and it follows a natural progression of how you might build a business. So then at the point at which we're ready to get into, say, something like finance, we would talk to Kirk and say, hey, we want a forecast. We need to learn how to read our balance sheets. How do we make assumptions? Things like that. So then, uh, Kirk, that's, is, that's your focus then. Is, I mean, is, you don't really help. Do you help people brainstorm um, new businesses and things like that, or do they really kind of have to have that molded when they come and see you and then they work on uh, spreadsheets and... And I think that's where Carly comes in, is helping women particularly get that self-confidence to start a business. Um, and then once the idea is there, then I, w I work with people. And I work with lots of people who come in with some pretty strange ideas, <laughs> um, but I will never tell them it's a good idea or a bad idea. I simply walk them through the process and at some point in time they go, oh, I'm not going to make any money, am I? <laughs> right. Right. And, and so it's really up to them to do that. But I think that there's, uh, I think that there's just an issue where people lack that, that confidence to do it. And I think Carly just does an outstanding job uh, getting women to feel more comfortable and understanding the process. And what does it mean? They still have to live, right? I right. mean, they still have to take care of families. They still mm -hmm. have to do all this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so Carly takes care of that. And then I come in and, and you know actually put down the nuts and bolts on a on a piece of paper. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I also run a small business, but a DJing and things like that. Mm -hmm. nice. And the scariest part is, all right, if I do this full time, and COVID hits, which happened to me, and you lose all your business, then you're you're stuck. So um, I, I get that part of being afraid to go all in on something. I think that's what you really need to do to be successful in a small business. Would you guys agree? Like, yeah, when I started the food service at Mount Baker Ski Area, I was just dumb. 
you know, and so I didn't have to go all in. Yeah. I just was. Yeah. And, and so I think that that's, uh, that's important. But yes, I think you do have to, to really, really believe in it. And if you don't, you're probably not going to be successful. Right. And also to do your research, we just met with a client yesterday for my agency who needs market research around identifying whether their business idea is going to be viable. So they might be working with us to try to gather data on how many hundreds of potential prospects are there in this sector that we're looking to break into. So when I'm talking to people about a business idea, I'll also try not to say if it's good or bad, but I will say go do your research if you can. Right. Uh, this has been fascinating. Um, we got to take a quick break here, but when we come back, we're going to dive more into the consulting services they offer, also get into more of the, I guess, the weeds of what people should be doing or looking to do uh, if you're trying to start a small business. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break uh, right here on Network TV on NCW Life. All right, welcome back to Network TV. We just got into some of the background of Kirk and Carly here, and now we're gonna kind of dive into more of the, the consulting they have to offer um, and some strategies and things like that that we should look for um, as people trying to start our own businesses. Uh, but first off, Carly, what are some of the unique challenges um, that females uh, particularly, what are some of those unique challenges that they face that you've noticed um, through your, your karma design and also through your 509 female founders? Yeah, thanks for asking. So part of talking about gathering data just before the break, tracking registration for the mastermind and just looking at our clients was noting why they said no if they didn't sign up. And there were three reasons, time or bandwidth, uh, cost, and family. And that was a stat that would probably not come up if it was a group for men, but a lot of women said no because they had obligations like that. So that was interesting to me. Plus, we were talking during the break about self-confidence. There's definitely an imposter syndrome for women thinking they don't belong in business, but it's now the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs. I call them uh, Kirk's fangirls. It seems <laughs> all of the women like to talk to Kirk about their business, yeah. or there's just a lot of women starting businesses. But he is fantastic at, like we were saying, taking the woman who's now empowered and ready to start a business and getting into the weeds and the details. So Kirk, in your time at the um, Small Business Development, is it, what's the C, the? Center. Center. Um, you've been there two years now? Or? Yep. So have you noticed an increase um, in women coming over and trying to become entrepreneurs or seeking your services? I think there, it's interesting because there's actually more women starting businesses than there are men. Um, in the SBDC, uh, we deal with both existing businesses and new businesses. So the, the existing businesses are more men and people wanting to get into business are more women. And is there any sort of, um, just curious, is there any sort of underlying theme or business type that they're trying to do or is this kind of all across the board? Oh, it's all across the board. It's that's, all across the board. That's amazing. And same thing with you, it's just every... Yeah, and I've even seen some stats on the size of these businesses and a lot of them are small because they're just starting or they're a hobby business or they're a side hustle. Um, actually, I think it's only less than 2% of women-owned businesses exceed the $1 million in revenue mark. So I'd definitely like to see them graduate up into that. But it's the beginning stages of right. women kind of, you know, getting their feet wet. Yeah, I, I would caution, like, I think everybody wants to grow fast. And I've seen that be very bad for businesses. Um, I feel from the businesses I've seen, I've been a part of a startup. I've started my own business, but I, it's like I never wanted to grow too fast because I want to be able to um, under under promise over deliver. Nice. So is that when it, what's the kind of the, the strategy, I guess, or is there any sort of philosophy around that? Or is it really just based off of the person, what they're trying to do and, and kind of their decision? Well, for me, one of the one of the interesting questions I, I ask my, all my clients and they tell them, you don't have to answer now, but how much money do you want to make in a year? And and they go, what? And they go, as much as I can. And I, go, I can't help you. Right. You, know, you need a target to, to be able to do that. And so I think that that's one of the most important uh, aspects. And growing too quickly, you know, okay, so you wanted to make $125,000. You didn't say you wanted to make two fifty. Right. And so really building your business and then getting it established 
because I've, as, as you, I've seen people grow too quickly and they run out of cash. They can be extremely profitable, yeah. but they run out of cash. And I, I think that's the thing I've seen is, is you don't understand, like you're making what you think is decent money, but you've got all this overhead. Mm -hmm. And if you have more goods than you're selling at the time and you've extended yourself out to banks or whoever, they're not gonna wait, they're gonna come and get their money. So yeah, uh, anything you wanna add on to that? Train well, of that's thought. just the importance of learning how to read financial documents because being fluent in that is so critical and I didn't know how until recently but and through the Goldman Sachs this was the 10,000 small businesses program that I graduated from they showed us how to identify a growth opportunity as a line item in say your you know cash flow projection and to say this is what we're gonna launch this year okay once that's good, we've tested the viability, let's launch something new the next year and the next year, and you make this five-year forecast, then you can scale responsibly rather than going crazy and growing too fast. Right, and I, I think it's, I mean, at least for me, it's scary to look at financials and uh, actually see what your balance sheet is and, and understand all of that, so I can understand why, why people are nervous about that. And I think that's a, a really good point you made, Kirk, about like, how much do you want to make? And are you asking that, like, how much do you want to personally make, or, or what do you think the business needs to make in order to be operational and, it's and cover everything? how much you personally want to make. Yeah. And then, and part of that is that they don't realize they have to pay both halves of Social Security, both halves of Medicare, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, well, you want to make a hundred thousand. Well, that means that you really need to make a hundred and thirty thousand. Right. And if you're going to do a restaurant, that really needs means you're going to have to. The restaurant's going to have to gross one point three million. <laughs> and then you start working backwards on, well, okay, how many people are you going to do each day? Yeah. And what's the average check going to be? And it, it's 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 a very interesting process. Very interesting process. You you just mentioned something there about the, um, and I love it because it's I've used it a lot as. And I think it's helped me out a lot is, is figuring, figuring out where you want to be and then taking those small baby steps back to the beginning. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I think you, I, I want to get your opinions on this, but like entrepreneurship, in order to make it to the big goal, you can't really focus on the big goal. You got to focus on all the little baby steps that get you there, right? Yes. And sometimes it takes a leap of faith. So, you know, the concept of focusing 80% of your time on the 20% of things that are going to yield the highest results. If you look at my Im email inbox, it's embarrassing. I have so many unopened things because they're not important. Right. Whereas last week, I drove to Seattle and back in one day to meet with a client that was worth it. Right. So <laughs> So I guess how, how do you guys balance that? You, you said 80-20 rule. Um, do you have a list that you make every day or, or how? what's your kind of workflow on prioritizing what's uh, important to you for that day and, and what's important, I guess, overall to your success? That, it's a good question. I don't have a process for doing that. I, it just sort of organically happens for me. Um, I do respond to everybody. It just depends. Maybe I respond more robustly to some people than others, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I, I guess you could probably tell from an email like how serious somebody is based off of kind of the questions they're asking or how far along they are. What I, what I normally do is when people come in, I give them a bunch of homework to do. Like, if they want to open a restaurant, I say, who's your competition? And I want you to go outside their door and count the number of people that go into their door <laughs> every day during these times so you can start getting some kind of idea of volume. And they go, well, I don't want to do that. Right. Okay, well, I guess that, I guess that's done. Yeah, you right. Know, you you know, I'll still work with them, but it indicates that they're really not very serious about doing the business. Yeah. And I like what you said about it's organic. So it's an intuitive feeling of what is going to have the highest ROI. And so one way that we think about it, about it as a process in 509 is what's your zone of genius? So if you can imagine a matrix, you've got your zone of competence, incompetence, excellence, and genius. And the goal is to be in the zone of genius as much as possible. The stuff you love, the stuff you could do in your sleep, the stuff that you do for free. Right. But you're going to get paid lots for it. <laughs> <laughs> and we get stuck in the other three zones things, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I could do my own taxes, but should you? Right. Or even the zone of excellence where you're close to what you're really good at, but you want to get in there so that every day is just awesome. Yeah, I think that's really important. Well said. Um, it's, it's really hard to do too, especially, I mean, in my business, it was super small on my side hustle, but I get caught up in the weeds sometimes, like, what should I wear, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, just show up and rock the party yeah. and you'll get paid and it'll be fun and you'll get business from there. So that's just great advice. Um, well, so how has you guys' 
uh, you guys have both kind of did this nomadic life and all that stuff. How has that kind of played into your roles with teaching or helping people in this entrepreneurship journey? I guess we'll start with you, Carly. Okay, sure. Yeah, I actually, Kirk was saying that he RV'd later, and I retired early. <laughs> <laughs> I did RVing in my 20s and 30s, and being nomadic and traveling all over, I've been to 20 plus countries, I really cite that as the reason why I see the world the way I do. And there's always a solution to something, and if you don't have it, you need to go explore some more. And so I just get so many different angles when I meet with people who are different than me. And I also learned that we have so much in common. So right. it's just this shared humanity experience. Yeah, I, I, so I'd agree with you there. I grew up in a small town, moved to LA, which was a complete shocker. Met yeah. a bunch of different people that didn't look like me and talk like me. And it, it really changed my uh, outlook and perspective on life. And then moving back to a small town, I brought my wife from there and it, it's kind of done the same thing for her. So I think all those different experiences and like getting to know the world outside you is very important. I would 100% agree with you. Kirk, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was interesting. I was thinking about it because I learned a lot from what I did from my dad who really didn't like his job. Mm -hmm. And he, he, was, he, he did a very good job taking care of the family, providing for all of us, but he really didn't like his job. And I just went, I'm not going to be that way. And so the nomadic thing that I've done is just been to keep learning and growing and to, to now be at my advanced age and be talking with some of my colleagues who haven't had the experiences. Uh, it's hard to imagine all the experiences I have had. And I feel very blessed to have been able to do that. That's awesome. Uh, and those, I mean, I, I think some people just get caught up in their how they feel comfortable. I have friends in the small town who've never left and they feel like they're completely fine with that. But I, I think you're missing a real important piece to not only share with your family, but to share like your view of how society works and, and different things you can do. Um, so I guess what's, we're wrong out of time here. I started the clock a little late here. So what would be a piece of advice you'd give to someone starting on their entrepreneurial journey today? Uh, Kirk, you want to go ahead and go first? So for me, which I think actually Carly should probably go first from the standpoint that get yourself psychologically prepared to do it. And there's a really good book called um, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the three personalities that you need to, to run a successful business. And then what, what I didn't do when I first started in business, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> and it's really important to have a plan. Uh, and that's and so that's my number one recommendation to people and it doesn't have to be overly sophisticated but you have to be able to have goals and measurable goals that you can look at each month to see are we getting there or not mm -hmm. yeah without the data you have no idea where you're going I mean it could exactly. feel good but it might be horrible exactly. yeah. <laughs> Carly? that's perfect and I really think that Kirk's right it's a balance between passion and planning and we also have a book that we hand out in month zero of 509 Female Founders. So when you sign up, you get this book, which is the crossroads of should and must. And so should, should, should all day. I should do this. I shouldn't do that. You're telling yourself. Other people are telling you. It's a lot of shoulds. Oh, the shoulds. But there's a little quiet voice in the back of your head. But I must do this. If I don't do this by the time I die, I'm going to regret it. Yeah. You know, so you need to go for that because it's going to keep you going through those long nights of entrepreneurialism and have a plan. <laughs> Yeah, and as I've gotten older, um, one thing, I, I was always the should or got to be mm -hmm. nice to do this. And some of the things that I've done in the last six years, I've just done. Like, nice. I don't think anymore. I'm like, I should do this. Well, just do it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm trying to start a podcast right now, so I just order all this equipment. Cool. I have no idea what I'm doing with it. <laughs> My wife's angry at me, but I like, I want to do what I've been talking about for four years, so just do it. So I think that's uh, sage advice. And if you need help with that, reach out to Carly or Kirk, and they can get you going with that. And uh, so thank you, Carly and Kirk. Uh, let, let us know how they get involved, uh, in touch with you um, if somebody's looking for some help with their entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, sure. So we're karmadesign.is, and then my coaching, business coaching website is carlysoroki.com. Perfect. And Kirk? And so it's the Washington Small Business Development Center, wsbdc.org. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. It was a very interesting conversation. We could go on about this all day. It's, I could sit here all day. But we have to get out of here for the day. So thank you for joining us on Network TV. And uh, tune in next week, and we'll have another episode coming at you from the NCW Live channel.